Today we are with Dr. Lugene Waters of Heartland Large Animal Services, and she's going to talk to us about bull breeding soundness examination. Good morning, you guys. So breeding sound, soundness evaluation is really essential in your herd. We don't really think about our bulls too much because they are kind of, uh, you know, only used part time, uh, part of the year, but they are half of our genetics for our herd. And when we have one cow producing one calf, but we have one bull producing many calves. So they are an essential part of our herd that needs to be evaluated. In addition to that, you don't want to be feeding your bull all year round and then him not be a good producer. So these guys guys can kind of hide in the back and uh, not be a producer and not be producing calves and not be producing good semen and if you don't find them you're just wasting your money feeding them so it's really an essential part no matter if you're a small producer with one or two bulls or a big producer with what we're doing today which is about 80. So uh, the breeding soundness exam can, is several different components, but we usually start with talking to our rancher and getting a good history. What is the libido of the bull? What is our sex drive? Uh, especially some of our foreign bulls that come from up north, I say foreign meaning not in Florida, um, they spend a lot of their summer sitting up underneath the trees out of the, in the shade out of the sun. So libido is the biggest part of, that we need help with from our producer to evaluate. And then once our producer gives us that history, we wanna do just do a basic physical exam when the bull comes in. So look at their eyes, look at their feet, they have to be able to see the cow, smell the cow, and then they have to be able to mount the cow. So bulls that are limping or have bad feet um, or have a bad eye, those can affect the breeding. And then once we move past that, we're going to use our electro ejaculator today to get a good sample. Um, once we get that sample, we're going to evaluate how the concentration looks, how many sperm are in the sample, um, and then the motility or gross motility, so all the sperm spent, um, swimming in unison together. And then once we evaluate that and score them, um, then we'll go on to stain that slide and look at the individual sperm to make sure what we call morphology is right, which is basically the anatomical look of the sperm. Is his tail coiled where he'll swim in a circle instead of a straight line? Uh, does he have some anatomical abnormalities like a proximal droplet that may slow him down so he doesn't make it through the cervix and into the uterus? Those things are really, really important to evaluate to make sure that we don't have some bulls that may look like they're okay on motility, but they actually have some morph morphological problems problems. Um, and then we're going to do some additional testing on these bulls today. One of the problems we've seen more recently recently is trick, which can affect, um, it can cause abortion, early abortion in the cow. So we're going to do some trick testing on these bulls. It's a protozoal parasite that lives in the prepuce of the penis. So we're going to take some samples to make sure that those aren't there today. And we'll talk more about trick later on. Tell me a little bit about the equipment that you have here, shoot side. Sure. So shoot side, it's, um, we're going to have our slide warmer, especially on today. It's a little bit chilly today, which is unseasonal for Florida but not unseasonable for bull season. We typically see in Florida our producers put our put the bulls out or in with the cows anywhere from October to February and then they'll pull them up um, anywhere from May, June, July and August. So when we test the bulls, we want to test them about 60 days prior to the breeding season. That's because if there is a problem with the sperm, we want the bull to have time to heal. If it's something that's not going to heal, we want to give the producer ample time to buy a new bull. So we typically test in the winter time. So you're going to definitely need a slide warmer. So you want that, that semen to be put on a slide that's the same temperature as the bull when it comes out. If not, if it's colder, it's going to shock that sperm and slow down that motility and won't get a proper reading. Um, in addition to that, we're going to have just a basic microscope. Some people do use um, phase contrast microscopes to make it easier to see the morphology but we're today we're going to use a stain so we do have some semen stain here that we're going to look at the motility and then stain that slide to go to a higher power on our microscope to look at morphology um, just some uh, a catcher here I call it and some AI cones to catch our semen sample there are many people that will just catch the sample on this slide directly I like to have a bigger volume I feel like it gives me a more complete view of the semen um, in general than just one drop um, um, we like to have a scrotal tape. So this is a really inexpensive um, tool here that we can use to measure the scrotum. That gives you two very important pieces of information. So the bigger the factory, the more it can produce. So the bigger the testicles, the more that they're going to be able to produce if they're normal. Um, we don't want to see um, uh, big testicles from an injury. That can cause a hydrocell, which can cause some issues. So this is a really good tool to make sure this, we are feeling those, the scrotum, making sure that it's a normal size and that they're big enough to produce ample amounts of semen. In addition, there is some statistics about heritability in um, the bulls and how the scrotum relates to age of heifers when they come into maturity. So the bigger the scrotum, the earlier that bull's daughters will come into sexual maturity. So if you have some bulls that you want to keep heifers out of, you're not going to want to choose a bull with a very small scrotum. So really simple piece of equipment gives us a lot of information. 
In addition to that, we are going to have an incubator out um, with some pipettes that we're going to get our um, trick sample in today. So uh, this is going to be going up the uh, prepuce and have a back pressure so that we can collect some of those protozoa if they exist in the prepuce. And then we'll put them into these trick pouches, which contain a media that allow that trick to reproduce. And then we can uh, get a good sample and send these to the state lab for PCR for trick. I asked Dr. Waters who is qualified to perform a breeding soundness evaluation. So your best person to be performing your breeding soundness evaluation is your veterinarian. There should be the most experience. If your not veterinarian is not comfortable, then you may want to find a veterinarian here who is. There are some different companies and different individuals that have a background in breeding and theory and genealogy, and you may want to seek them out. But for the most part, your veterinarian is going to have the tools, resources, and education to perform this. Today. What all are you examining when you do the breeding soundness exam? So that's a great question. What are we looking for when we do a breeding soundness evaluation? So first of all, we're going to talk to our owner about the the, um, a libido and so how how much that bull is sexually active is he standing under the trees panning in the summer or is he actually staying with the cows that's going to be the first thing that we want to talk to our owner about um, looking at because we can't get that information from a scientific test shoot side that's the information we're going to need for the owners to share with us secondly as that bull comes in the shoot we're going to watch how he walks how his locomotion is make sure there's no lameness um, on any of the feet especially the back legs make sure there's no swollen joints um, in your digital space all that look at the eyes ears, mouth, nose, they got to smell the cow, they got to see the cow, and they definitely got to be able to mount the cow. So any issues with the eyes or the nose um, or those back legs, that's going to be a major fail on the part of the breeding soundness exam because if he, he can have good semen all day long, but if he can't mount that cow, we're not going to be getting anywhere. Um, once we get all that, um, we're going to have our technician go in. Before she puts the probe in, she's going to fill the prostate gland, the seminal vesicles, make sure everything feels normal in the rectum and all those secondary sex organs. And then she's going to put our electro ejaculator in and give us a good sample. Once we get that semen sample, then we're going to look at motility and morphology. So motility, how fast the, swar the semen are swimming um, in unison, and then morphology, how the individual sperm look anatomically. So the major parts are the physical exam, the motility, the morphology, and then our scrotal circumference. So out of kindness to the bull, we use lube. Your first the goal is to clean the cavity of feces so your probe can make contact to the prostate, which is a secondary sex organ. You're also feeling for abnormalities. Uh, we've also been able to identify hermaphrodites from this area. And um, you can, there's ones that have scar tissue that you wouldn't want to do the probe in. You would then do them manually. And uh, you can identify like lice stuff like that that causes issues with the skin so our probe actually goes up little by little the intensity takes baby steps okay so she's telling me he's good i've cleaned out the cavity and we have massaged the prostate a lot of times this will make them re relax when you massage so their muscles are relaxed fire and dr water says a remote that turns on our ejaculator or battery sometimes when it's cold they can be slow um, body condition can have a lot to do with their reaction we're halfway up to our highest intensification sometimes if they are a, a big bull versus a small bull their reproductive tract can either set really high or be down low and you may have to adjust the probe so you make contact with the prostate you know as I'm pulling down a little bit so he may since he might be younger but we also see that he's smaller than the big charlets so if we pull it out a little bit we'll make better contact with that prostate so confirmation can have a lot to do with it good and she turns it off and we take it out. Technician Elizabeth has already primed our bull. So by priming it, she, we mean that she has kind of removed some of that uh, manure so that our electro ejaculator has good contact with the secondary sex glands. And then that also stimulates the bull. And then we want to get a good erection. So right now, some of that ejaculate's a little bit clear. So we're going to go ahead and dump that and then wait for a little bit of a more cloudy sample like that. So now we have a good extension or protrusion of the penis from the sheath. We have a good erection and then we're getting a good ejaculate. So we want that milky white color in the substance. 
if the when we start to get that whiteness and we still have some clearness that can dilute your sample and make it look like it's not as good of a quality sample you want to get a few good uh, um, pumps there get a nice consistent sample and then we're going to let miss elizabeth know that we're going to turn her off so that she can remove that so that we can proceed with the trick test I put one drop on our pre-warmed slide spread it out and then we're looking at gross motility so here. we want to see mass swirling it should look like waves of the ocean and then we categorize this based on how much is moving so this is a good bull so we let our crew know that they can go ahead and vaccinate this bull because if he was a poor bull and they were going to sell him they would not want to vaccinate him due to withdrawal times so now we're going to add some of our semen stain here mix it in really good and consistently and then we're just gonna make a feathered edge just to um, make that much thinner so that we can see the individual sperm a little better so we're gonna pull that out so it's a nice uh, we have a nice line to read against and it's nice and thin and then we're gonna put it back on our slide warmer to dry and then while that's drying um, we're our other technician Mr. Fred Waters is going to grab our trick sample. So he's going to put that pipette up into the sheath really nice and deep and then he's going to put some back pressure on that syringe to create a suction within the sheath as he's scraping in and out. So this the, the trick can live deep within the crypts of the prepuce or what we call the wrinkles. Um, the older the bull the deeper they're going to be those crypts are going to be. So you really want to scrape until you get a nice pink color to your sample which means you scraped it enough that you've created a little bit of agility in there that's created some bleeding perfect so perfect sample nice and pink plenty of substance and then we're going to put that into our media so that it can reproduce outside oh and then we're going to mix it really well and then we're just going to package this up and this goes to our state lab here in florida uh, you can do a culture on this or you can do a PCR. We do PCR because there are several different species of trick and we want to make sure that the species that we're testing for is the one that can cause abortion in the cow. So we're going to label this appropriately and then put it back in the incubator for about 48 hours. And as the bull leaves, we're going to again check him for lameness and for body condition score. Both of those really important. If he's too thin or hurts to walk, he's not going to be mounting any cows. So now we're, we've let our slides dry. So we did our gross motility and then we added the stain and then allowed them to dry after we feathered the stain. So we have a nice thin coat of sperm to look at. And we're, now we're looking at each individual sperm. So we want to look at the morphology of the sperm. So we're going to look at what their tails look like, how the head is attached to the tail. If there is a detachment of the head and the tail, if the stain will stain them if they're alive or dead when you add the stain. Um, so we're going to look at all those things. So this is a really, really important step. Um, you can he see some different, different things happening to the sperm and their tails, depending on if there's an infection in the testicles. Um, um, if there is heat stress on the bull, sometimes it can affect their tails. Um, we can also differentiate between primary and secondary abnormalities. So if the abnormality happened within the testicle, which is like the factory, versus if it happened in the epididymis, which is the storage area. Sometimes if we have an issue with the tails, it's happening in the maturation or storage area, those things can solve on their own. So we not, all, we not always fail those bulls based on that. So what we want to look at is we want to kind of count 100 sperm on each slide. And of those 100 sperm, we want to see at least 70% of them be within normal limits, meaning that they don't have any issues with the head or the tail and they were all alive. So today, because we're doing this for the owners, um, information it's not a sale bull we're just going to be estimating that number so we're going to look at several different ones and take the average of normal sperm in each one each view so i'll look at a view count 10 sperm if seven of them are normal then i'll go to the next view count 10 sperm if seven of them are normal then he's going to be a pass so 70 percent is your marker and then normally if this bull was for sale we would actually count 100 sperm to get an ex exact uh, measurement of the abnormalities and make sure we're above that 70 marker. And if we do get one that has some abnormalities, we're going to make note of that on their record so that we can look at it from year after year to make sure that the problem, if they have a problem, it's being solved. Um, and that if they, if the problem's worsening each year, that we're going to put that bull in the cold. So one of the most important parts about your physical exam is not only looking at their feet and their nose and their eyes, but also really taking a feel of that scrotum. So we measure the scrotum to make sure that we get ample production of semen and because it's directly relatable to how early his daughters will come into sexual maturity. 
but we also want a field to make sure everything's normal. So this bull is actually one that has a hydrocell. So a hydrocell is kind of like a bruise. It's a collection of fluid that gets on uh, into the scrotum itself. And so you can see it's really big, so it had a very large scrotal circumference. And this side's just full of fluid. So this side's kind of normal. You can squeeze it. It feels like tissue. But this is just a big pocket of water. What that does is it insulates the scrotum. So not only is that temperature of that uh, the testicle higher, which decreases the sperm count, but it also makes it heavier. And so it can uh, damage the testicle even more and also make it impossible for the bull to pull the scrotum up towards the body to keep it warm on days when it's colder. So they, the sperm are actually produced at a different temperature than the bull's internal body temperature. So temperature regulation is really important. So this fluid insulating and preventing the up and down motion of the scrotum away from the body when it's hot and towards the body when it's cold is really important in sperm production. So you can see that hydrocell there. This is what we call a severe. We do rank them from mild, moderate, and severe. And this bull is going to be a cold bull because that's a big one. So once we have completed all of our evaluation for the breeding soundness exam, that including the physical exam, where we look at their feet and their eyes and their ears and their nose and make sure they're able to breed a cow. And then we evaluate that uh, secondary sex organs, the, seam, the scrotal circumference and the motility and morphology of the semen. Once all that stuff is complete, that's when we're going to classify each bull. So the three classifications for breeding soundness exams are satisfactory, unsatisfactory and deferred. So satisfactory means that they pass and they are a satisfactory breeder. Unsatisfactory means that they failed for some reason or other. Today we had some bulls that failed based on their body weight and condition um, or the loss of their teeth, which makes them lose condition after, after a long period of time or age. Um, we had bulls that failed based on scrotal circumference or the anatomy of the scrotum and testicles because we had a hydrocell. And then we also did fail one based on the motility of the sperm. So it not being strong enough motility, those sperm were swimming fast enough to make it through the cervix into the uterus. So that's going to be your satisfactory and your unsatisfactory. The middle ground is your deferred bulls. So deferred means that they really don't pass today, but we think that they will recover. So we got a couple yearling bulls today that were a little thinner. Those are all going to fall in the deferred category. Um, some of these yearling bulls that are two, three, four years of age, they're kind of losing some teeth and reaching their maturity. And that puts a lot of pressure on their system for nutritional requirements. We're going into winter. So these bulls that are losing their teeth or the low end of the totem pole as far as feeding um, and the grass isn't as rich this time of year sometimes tend to lose some weight and that can affect the semen quality so those bulls are going to fall into our deferred status meaning that we think they'll recover because they're young bulls but they really don't pass today based on their body condition scores and the motility of their sperm so that deferred category again means that we don't have any injuries or uh, lameness or um, effects with the semen that are going to fail them forever but they don't pass today so we think in the future they'll be fine so so those bulls the key number is 60 days so 60 days is how long it takes for spermata the sperm to be produced so from the time that they're produced in the testicle to the time as ejaculated is 60 days so we want to give those bulls at least 60 day time off before we retest those deferred bulls so some owners are going to choose to go longer than that so that they can feed those bulls during the off season give them some more time but our minimum is 60 days turnover for um, the sperm production so we, when we write a bull as deferred, we're going to give that owner a 60 day mark. Now he can choose to test them out longer to get, give them more time on feed again, but it has to be a minimum of 60 days for that sperm to reproduce once we solve the issue at hand.